Hey there smart monkeys, welcome to my channel and if you've been here before, welcome back. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification button if you don't want to know when I post any new videos. In this video I'm going to be looking at perimeter and area, um, very popular request. So yeah, hopefully I can help you understand this concept better. Um, I am essentially going to just teach you what's the difference between the two, how to work with units and really how to approach um, exam type questions um, on this topic. Right, so let's do this. <music> So this is the third lesson on measurement and we're going to be looking at perimeter and area and I want to start by making sure you understand the definitions and what perimeter and area actually is. Okay, so essentially perimeter is the distance around on the outside um, of a two-dimensional shape and is measured in standard units and then um, so essentially whenever you're doing perimeter you are working with the outside lengths and you are adding them all together and that will give you your total perimeter. Your area however is an entire space that a shape takes up so not just the perimeter not just the outside sides and that area is basically speaking to the entire space that a shape takes up and this is in units squared. So when you're giving your answers, if it's in centimeters, you're going to give it in centimeters squared. However, if it's perimeter, you're just going to write centimeters. So that would, that's what I mean by standard units. Okay, so that's essentially the definitions. Now, in a test situation, they are not going to be giving you and asking you a perimeter of a rectangle, you know, as just as a rectangle. They're going to put all this information um, for you in like a scenario type um, way, okay, where... They'll say, instead of saying a rectangle, they'll say it's a soccer field. Or instead of saying it's a circle, they'll say um, it's a can of Coke. Okay, so you're going to have to take what you are being taught and apply it to the specific scenarios. Okay, so the first thing, making sure you understand the difference between perimeter and area. All right, now, important things to remember before you even attempt any questions on this. The first thing is you have to ensure that whenever you are doing calculations, you are do doing calculations with the same units, okay? So you can't add meters to centimeters. You have to first convert them both to either both centimeters or both meters and then find the answer. So in this case, 4 meters plus 15 centimeters is not equal to 19 meters, okay? Because these two units are not the same. However, the correct way to do this is to convert one of the units to another. Excuse me. So in this example, we've got 15 centimeters, which we then convert to meters, which is then the 0 0.15. And then you add these two together to give you 4.15 meters. Okay, so that would be the correct way. So when you're doing questions, please do not do any calculations if all the values are not in the same unit. Then the last one is... Take note of the unit that is being asked in the question, okay? So if the question says give the answer in centimeters squared, then you can convert at the start of the question, you can convert all the units to centimeters so that when you do the final answer, get the final answer, it's already in centimeters. Or what you can do is you can use the units from the question as is, do all the calculations, making sure that they're all in the same unit. And then at the end, let's say your answer is in meters squared, then you can just convert the final answer to the units that they're asking. If you ask, in my experience, the students who convert all the units to the correct unit first are generally the ones that get to the accurate answer. Uh, because if you do it the second way, then most of the times I see either students forget to convert it at the end or they don't convert it correctly. Okay, so without further ado, we are now going to look at an uh, actual um, question, right? And 
because I don't really have you in a physical classroom and can go through different scenarios, I try to choose questions that cover a larger variety of this content. So um, the question that I've chosen uh, to work through now is actually going to look at how you can apply everything that I've just explained to you now. Okay, so Julia wants to build a dollhouse. Right, the house will be rectangular and have a ceiling made of thin wooden boards. The exterior measurements of the house is 5 to 5 millimeters by 400 millimeters. So here, it tells you here is the 5 to 5 and this is the 400. The walls are 20 millimeters thick. So between this, let's, this would then now be your walls. Okay, the wooden boards only cover the internal area of the house. So the wooden boards are only going to cover this inside rectangle. Okay, then a string of fairy lights will be hung right around the top edge of the interior walls. So if you look at the interior walls, this is the top of the interior walls. So take note, we this is a bird's eye view of this. You're looking at this dollhouse from the top. Okay, so the question asks, calculate in centimeters squared the area of the interior floor of the house. Now I want to emphasize here, grade 12s, always read the question first. Always read all the information that's given to you before you even read the question. Because what happens that I find is that students who go to the question first, they just sort of read the question and then they try and find what information they need to answer the question. You are going to miss things if you do it in that way. Right? You have to read everything first. And so when you read the question, you then know where to get the information that you need for that specific question. So I've read through this question now and I've made sure that I understand every single measurement that they give me and I actually can see it visually or I can see it visually in my mind. If you want to draw it, but most of the times in the exams they give you the image, but if they don't, draw it, write it down, make it as tangible and visual as possible so that your brain can understand what it is that you are trying to calculate. Okay, so this is now the picture the question wants to know. Calculate the area of the interior floor of the house. So remember, this is now the walls. This is your exterior. So the area of the interior is actually the area of this rectangle here. What in space does this inside area actually take up? Okay, so if you look now, you see that this width is 5 to 5. But this 20 here and this 20 here, if I subtract it from the 5 to 5, will then give me this length. Okay, because it's literally the difference between this length and this one is just the two 20s on the sides. So in order to actually find this width, I'm going to say 5 to 5 minus the 20 minus the 20 and it will give me 485 millimeters. I'm going to do the same for the length, right? So here I've got the 400 and remember I'm now subtracting this and then subtracting that and that will give me the 360. So what I now have is I actually have the measurements, the length and the breadth of the interior rectangle now. And now I can actually do the area calculation, which is length times breadth. So that means I will take the two answers and multiply them by each other. And my answer will be 174,600 millimeters squared. Okay. Now, take note. The question asks this in centimeters squared. So you're going to have to convert this to centimeters squared before you give your final answer. Now, I have an entire lesson on how to convert the units, okay? It's very important because you can literally lose all your marks and get all weird types of answers if you don't know how to convert. So, I'm going to do this conversion now, but if you feel like you don't understand this section, please go back to my conversion video, okay? You can just look under playlists and then there's a, a, a measurement folder and in the measurement folder, the first video is conversions and you can find it there. Okay, so I want to convert my answer that's in millimeters squared now to centimeters squared. And the way I'll do that is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going from millimeters squared to centimeters squared, which means I must divide. And what do I divide by? Dividing it by the 10 squared. 
So that will give me 1746 centimeters squared. Right. So what did I actually calculate? This is the area of the floor of the house on the inside. Okay. Right, so that's the first question. Now let's look at the second question. It says the dimensions of each of the wooden boards she wants to use for the ceiling are given as 97 millimeters, 180 millimeters, and 2 millimeters. Calculate whether nine boards are enough for a dollhouse. Now again, you have to make sure that you understand and visualize this. So this is looking at the house from the top, right? And she's going to place the wooden boards across the interior part of this only. Okay, so the question wants to know, so how many boards does she actually need above this area? So what you will do to answer this question is you will look at what is the total length here and then look at a length here that perfectly fits within that um, space. So if I take 485 and I divide it by 97, I get a perfect answer of 5, which means I can have 5 blocks fitting in here and then 180 which is then this side would be two of them can actually fit in here okay so let me visually show you what i'm doing so this is the amount of length uh, uh the amount required along the length it's the 485 because that's the total the total let's say width or length and you want to divide it by the length of the board so if i get that i get five boards which means I have five boards that I'm going to put across this, right? Then I have asked myself, what is the um, amount required along the width? So here now it's the 360 divided by the width of the board, which is 180. And that will give me two boards down, right? So in order to find the total amount of boards, I'm just going to take those two answers and multiply them by each other. So that will give me five multiplied by 2 and that will give me 10 boards and that's how it's going to look right so in order then for you to answer the question and remember the question says calculate whether nine boards are enough for a dollhouse so you see you need 10 boards for the dollhouse so you actually have to answer the question by saying no nine boards will not be enough Remember the two aspects to the subject is the mathematical aspect and the literacy aspect. The mathematics is doing the calculations, knowing when to multiply, knowing when to add, etc. And then the literacy is really you interpreting and making sure that you are understanding what it is that you are calculating. So in this case, the final answer, you actually have to give the literacy aspect, which is actually answer and say that you understand that nine boards will not be enough. Okay, now let's look at the third question. It says, calculate in meters the exact length of the fairy lights. Now, if you remember in the question, it says a string of fairy lights will be hung around the top edge of the interior wall. So picture this. Remember, again, this is the bird's eye view. So you're looking at it from the top. So the inside um, length is going to be have the fairy lights, right? So already your brain goes, okay, perimeter. Because the perimeter, the fairy lights is not going to be placed on the entire area. It's just going to be placed on the um, um, right around um, at the top edge of the interior walls. So they want to know in meters, what is the exact length of those fairy lights? Now in the previous question, we worked out that the top part is 485 and the this part is 360. So... All you need to do now is just add 485 plus 360 plus 485 plus 360. And that's how you will actually find the perimeter. Remember, perimeter is just adding the outside sides. And the perimeter is what where the fairy light is actually going to be placed on. Okay, so that will give me the 485 multiplied by 2 plus the 360 multiplied by 2. And the total length is then 1690 millimeters. Again, we look, but the question asks for it in meters. So we are going to convert using the, the lesson I taught you on conversion. We'll go, we're going from uh, millimeters to meters. So you are literally moving across this. So I count them up to zeros. There's three zeros in between and I'm moving in that direction. So I divide. So my answer is going to be 1.69 meters. 
Okay, so the first two questions was looking at area, right? You wanted to find what's the area of the interior floor and what is the area of the boards and how much of the board's area can fit in the total area. However, for this question, we're actually looking at perimeter now because we were only interested in putting the fairy lights on the outside edges of these walls. Okay, now the last question, it says, Julia has a budget of 380 Rand to buy the wooden boards and the fairy lights. If it costs 35 Rand per board and 16 Rand for 2 meters of fairy lights, calculate whether Julia will have enough money for the materials. Okay, so remember in our previous question, the amount of boards we needed was 10, right? Then the amount of fairy lights we needed was 1.69 meters. Now, we just have to multiply these totals by the actual price. So let's look at the cost of the boards. We have 10 boards and each board costs 35 Rand, which means the 10 boards together will cost us 350 Rand. Now, for the fairy lights, they tell us that for 2 meters, it's 16 Rand. So we first have to find out, but how much is it for 1 meter, right? So we're going to say 16 divided by 2 and it's 8 Rand per meter. Now that you have the price per meter, you can then multiply it by how much you need, which is 1.65, ah, 69, and your answer is then 13 Rand 52. So the 350 Rand is the cost for the boards, and the 13 Rand 52 is the cost for the fairy lights, which means in total, the cost will then be these two totals added together, and therefore she will need to pay 363 Rand and 52 cents for the boards and the fairy lights. Now again, we didn't answer the question yet. The question says, is 380 Rand enough? So to answer the question, you will say, yes, 380 Rand will be enough to buy the materials because she only needs 363 Rand and 52 cents. Okay, so this is how you apply the definitions and the calculation um, sort of rules of converting and not doing calculations if the units are different. This is how you actually apply that to real life scenarios and to the scenarios that they actually give you in a test and an exam situation. Okay, so I hope this was, you, I hope you found this lesson helpful and good luck if you're writing any tests on this content. Thank you. All right, so that's that video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And yeah, if you have any questions um, or there's something that you don't understand, just pop it in the comment section and I will try and answer you as soon as I can. Um, and then also if you have any requests, for future videos, also add it in the comment section. I really try my best to make videos based on what you guys are asking me for. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!